You know that overused joke that anime are just Chinese cartoons? Well, now, for some of it, it is. In fact, the Chinese anime and manga industry is valued at $26 billion. In comparison, the animation market in Japan is worth about $20 billion or 2 trillion yen. You can even add Chinese anime to your anime list. But if you looked back in the past, most people just watched Japanese anime over there. The ones they are allowed to watch at least. Because back in 1990, the second largest economy in the world by GDP was Japan, and China was in 11th place. Now, Japan is the third largest economy in the world, and China is the second largest. That's quite some gross. And the style of animation is pretty similar and obviously inspired by the Japanese. And they add Chinese religious and cultural themes to win local fans over. They even have a bad romance harem anime. Chinese companies like Tencent, Baidu and Netties are trying to join in on the animation market. And it's growing there with younger people, especially people under 18 that are willing to spend all their money on anime merchandise. Now that sounds cool and all, but what if people over here suddenly start liking this dodgy anime that's been heavily edited by the Chinese government. That's the thing. Over there, if you have an anime studio, there's a high probability that the PLA will be knocking on your door, not so kindly asking for storyboards and scripts they can revise. So if you released your brand new isekai anime, that one time I got reincarnated as Chairman Mao's little sister, it might need some revision. Yeah, Japanese anime also isn't completely innocent in dodginess. I'm looking at you, old enemies of Kantai Collection. But at least they added the USS Iowa and they showed off her 16-inch guns. Orders her nine 16-inch guns to fire a mighty salvo. And in Japan, you won't get sent to the firing squad if you have a problem with the government. While the creators of Chinese manga and anime might be heavily inspired by the Japanese, it's still the Chinese officials that look over it. And in case you didn't know, China and Japan aren't particularly in good terms with each other, because they killed lots of people in Asia during World War II. Especially in China, where the death toll lies between 15 and 20 million people, 3 million of which were military casualties. And some Japanese textbooks and weebs aren't completely honest with this stuff and it really annoys countries like China. So stories with a strong anti-Japanese sentiment might rise if the Chinese animation and manga industry expands. And then people in other places will also start watching that, and then they suddenly have the urge to claim all of the South China Sea. Like, imagine the shitstorms those blokes can cause on Twitter. Also, if an anime studio in Japan, for example, wants to sell some of their anime in China, they have to edit it and it has to be approved by Chinese officials before they can sell it there. And because China's animation market is increasing because of the rise of the middle class there, like Spirited Away only got aired there a few months ago. That's why on the list of highest grossing animated films, you see Spirited Away in green because they are still airing it in China. And it made 60 million US dollars there and it got moved up to 8th place and is now the highest grossing anime film of all time beating your name. And if you don't edit your work for China's approval, you can lose out on quite some potential money. So even if you don't watch Chinese anime, your entertainment could be affected by it. And it's easy to get stuff banned there. Like Back to the Future got banned in China just because it featured time travel. But who knows, maybe this growing influence of animation from both countries may bring both countries closer together. Or a crazy flame war will happen on the internet.